Hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis, and here are five big stories that I want to cover today. Usually, I try to do about three, but some days I just have to do more. And I'm going to start with this. It's a bit of a correction from yesterday. So Hezbollah confirms the death of Faud Shakur, uh, the terrorist group's most senior military commander killed in yesterday's Israel strike in Beirut. Now, I confused him with this guy here, Talal Hamaya, and I said that he was the guy behind the the 1983 U.S. Marine Corps barracks bombing. I got it wrong. It was this guy. They were both killed within about 24 hours of each other. And this was uh, Israel, uh, an attack on him and an attack on him about within a day or so. I got it wrong, but basically it was the same story. Israel uh, took this both of these guys out. Now, there's going to be some retribution. Remember, the red flag of retribution was being raised over a mosque. And uh, so now, right now, northern Israel, right now, we hold the Lebanese government responsible for every single Hezbollah rocket fired toward Israel. Hezbollah means literally the party of God, of, of Allah. Uh, and they are... Uh, so it was... It was Hamas in southern Israel, well, not southern Israel, but in the Gaza Strip that attacked on October 7th. It's Hezbollah, that's the other group that is in Lebanon attacking from the north into Israel right now. Um, why is this important? So it's important if you care about Ukraine because any distraction like this takes the West's eye off the ball on what's going on in Ukraine, devote, you know, moves resources over to Israel rather than to Ukraine. So these international events are important. Okay, second big story, F-16s in Ukraine. I just did this video about an hour or so ago and uh, I talked about everything that you need to know. I went through a dozen or so articles to help you understand context so what f-16s will and won't do but then i also saw this from the institute for the study of war f-16 deliveries to ukraine will likely begin in small numbers and it already has six have already arrived and material and training constraints will likely prevent ukrainian forces from leveraging fixed wing air power at scale in 2024 so you won't expect dramatic results this year as the ISW previously noted, Ukraine will need to attrit Russia's overall air defense capabilities to safeguard F-16s and properly integrate them into Ukraine's combat operations. That means like taking out S-300 and S-400s and other air defense that Russia has and in order to be able to use them uh, maximally. Now, after putting that video out, I found this. This was uh, Eric Prince. Eric Prince is the guy that uh, created uh, Black Blackwater, the private military contractors that you might have heard of in um, uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, so he's somebody in the know. But listen to what he had to say here. And I'm trying to find the original source here, if anybody knows where this whole video came from, because I want to watch the whole video. But we're slow walking weapon systems to Ukraine for reasons I just don't understand why the Biden administration's just so slow. Listen to what Prince had to say. Tiring 200 combat aircraft, okay? Being taken from an active fighting flying squadron, flown to the desert in Arizona and parked for eternity, written off to zero value to the taxpayers, okay? Including about 50 F-15s, 50 F-16s, and 42 A-10s. For your listeners, F-15, air superiority aircraft, F-16, air superiority and ground attack, and A-10, the best tank-killing aircraft ever made, literally made back in the 70s to kill Russian tanks. Now, that might be a little bit different now with the air defense that they have, but A-10 Warthogs were no joke. So, uh, at any rate, so we have all these that we parked in a boneyard somewhere, and why didn't we just provide them? All being flown to the desert, wasted. I said, fly any combination of those to Ukraine. Some of these old aircraft to Ukraine, put Ukrainian rondelles on them. You can use Ukrainian pilots. You can use contractor pilots, any combination, just like, right? Remember, the Flying Tigers was a used for about one year before the United States was involved in World War II, but we wanted to help stop the Japanese from bombing Chinese cities. They allowed U.S. aircraft flown by contractor pilots. It did exactly that, working for a foreign entity. In this case, those old U.S. aircraft that were already written off, transfer them to Ukraine. Um, a, a budget, I think, 250 million bucks 
would have been enough to make those aircraft flyable, fund the pilots, the fuel, and the weapons, and you would have... Wow. I mean, it, it's like we don't want Ukraine to win. We could have done all that, and 890 days... So about 30 days in is when they first were asking for F-16s, and it's day 890 now, and wow. Okay, so... All right, it's just frustrating. Okay, next big story. Uh, Russia frees Evan Gerskovich and others in biggest prisoner swap since the Cold War. Cold War has taken place as, uh, since the U.S. Cold War has taken place as the biggest swap, 16 people were freed from Russian custody, including the Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gerskovich. Several other foreign citizens held in Russia and numerous Russian political prisoners were also freed. The exchange took place at Ankara Airport on Thursday in a complicated operation in which planes arrived from and departed to multiple countries. Among those returning to Russia was the assassin Vadim Krasikov, who has been held in a German prison since 2019 for the murder of a Chechen exile in uh, Berlin. Additionally, several deep cover Russian illegal spies arrested in Norway and Slovenia were swapped. So, yeah, and some people were there for a long time. Paul Whelan is finally coming home. He was there more than five years. Some, like Gerskovich, were there a little less than two years. And yeah, so that's what we know. Two minors were also sent to Russia, believed to be the children of a couple jailed in Slovenia. Gerskovich was, uh, he's the most famous. He was the Wall Street Journal reporter. Uh, he was uh, arrested in March 2023 while reporting in the city of Ekaterinburg and was sentenced to 16 years in prison just recently for espionage last month. Well, I mean, we called that reporting. They called it espionage. He pleaded not guilty in the Wall Street Journal and the U.S. government has dis have dismissed the charges as nonsense. So they're getting them back and that's a good thing. But, you know, I, I mean, and they got 16 Westerners and Russian dissidents. Putin got eight spies, assassins and criminals and two kids of the deep cover spy couple. So that's that's what happened here. But like, it's just it's terrible to make these kind of deals. I, I remember when Putin took Brittany Gr uh, Grenier, uh, the, the WNBA player, and he must have thought he had Michael Jordan because he thought she was like, just, wow, look, they'll, they'll have to get, uh, you know, I, I think you'll see another American arrested before too long and then held under bogus charges again, and, and that's the way it'll work. Here's a picture of uh, Gerskovich, and here's Whelan uh, on the plane with the others. And, uh, and so that's good that they're coming home, but it's, it's almost like you're setting, setting ourselves up for, uh, him to take somebody else soon. Okay. Here's Vlad Vexler war, a business deal between potential soldiers and the state. You weigh up the death rate versus the monetary reward. This mutes the social backlash to losses. If you go, family and friends see you as gambling on a risky business deal, but now uh, I just saw this today. Russian fathers of many children will not be subject to deferment for mobilization. This is something that they promised early on. And this is something that Ukraine actually does. The state Duma in Russia, the Russian parliament, rejected the draft law on deferment from mobilization for fathers who have three or more children. The bill was submitted to the lower house of parliament a week after the start of the partial mobilization in Russia in September 2022 and was ultimately rejected on July 30th, 2024. One of the deputies explained the decision by the fact that national security and defense capability of the state should be a priority. So what's that tell you when they're saying, no, we really need more people, including this class of people that has children that has all these extra responsibilities? The state Duma started working on the bill only in 2024. Committee members said that they could not agree with the method of protecting large families proposed by the authors. The committee referred to the article of the Constitution, which stated that, quote, defending the fatherland is the duty and obligation of a citizen of the Russian Federation, unquote. Okay, well, it's not. It's a special military op operation. You're not really defending the fatherland. You're really just over there in Ukraine, and it's not really a big thing anyway. But it is a big thing, and they're running out of soldiers they can easily tap without causing a greater problem. Now it's worse in Ukraine. Ukraine has this mobilization problem at a larger scale, but 
just to see that they have this problem at the scale is really interesting. In October 2022, during partial mobilization, it was reported that fathers with three or more children under 16 years of age would receive a deferment from partial mobilization. No such luck. Okay. Uh, last story, uh, FSB Major General Dmitry Mishurov, in charge of combating corruption in the Federal Customs Service, is on trial for, wait for it, for corruption. <laughs> okay, well, how about that? That's Russia. Okay, my friends, that's all that I have. If you enjoyed this or if, if this added value to you and you have not been become a subscriber, I'd appreciate it if you'd think about subscribing. I do a uh, daily brief in the morning and then in the evening I do three big stories, which sometimes becomes four big stories or five big stories. And then sometimes I do special videos in between like this on F-16s in Ukraine. Just click subscribe and ring that bell. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.